Um, and thank you for, for being on this virtual conference and uh, having me to speak as part of it as well. Um, I'm Helen Davies from Future Pump and I've certainly recognised a few people on the uh, uh, up on the side chat at the moment but if um, anyone doesn't know of Future Pump uh, we are a manufacturer, manufacturer of solar powered irrigation pumps for smallholder farmers in the tropics and we are headquartered in the UK and we have a bespoke factory in Rajkot, India. And we sell our pumps through local distributors um, across Africa and Asia. And we've currently sold over 8,000 solar pumps through our network of, of currently 15 distributors. Um, can I have the next slide, please? So um, personally, I think that, that small farm irrigation is, is a fascinating topic. On paper, it essentially seems like a, a no-brainer. 80% um, of food consumed in Africa is actually grown on small farms, and irrigation has been proven to dramatically increase both the quality and the quantity of yields on farms. However, 98% of food crops are still rain-fed. Farmers just hope the rains come regularly. And as Alfred just mentioned, um, climate change is actually causing a big problem here it's no longer reliable to, to just rely, wait for the rains. So farmers do urgently need to take control of watering their crops to avoid harvest failures and then the food security problems that come with that. So as I said, irrigation sounds like an, a no-brainer really. So why is it that irrigation, the uptake of irrigation is still so low? Um, can I have the next slide please? Um, so there are several barriers to uptake of technologies. These range from technological and economic challenges to sort of marketing and distribution of, of new technologies. Until recently, irrigation options uh, available to smallholder farmers have been unsustainable, either physically unsustainable. Some farmers try to irrigate with buckets and that limits this the size of land that you can actually irrigate. Um, others use petrol pumps, which lock in high fuel costs and running costs and then cause challenges to, to making your farm sustainable and profitable. Next slide, please. So um, Future Pump, at, at Future Pump, we've started to tackle this, this challenge by using the power of the sun. So the, the free resource that is reliable and constant, especially across the tropics. Um, and we're on a mission to, to connect small, small farms with appropriate irrigation technologies. And to do this, we have created a range of solar irrigation pumps, and these have been designed specifically with the smallholders in mind. And we've perfected these pumps over the last few years by actually getting feedback directly from the customers in the field and bringing that into our designs and incorporating that. Next slide. Um, and so far, we're proud to say that our, our fleet of solar pumps, so the 8,000 across, across the tropics, have reported over a billion litres of water pumped and thousands of tonnes of carbon saved and income improvements for our customers. And we know this because of the remote monitoring and the data loggers that we have on our pumps. And these are the same data loggers which enabled us to work on the refruit um, precision irrigation project, which will be talked about in more detail later. Uh, next slide. So farmers who are using beach pump solar pumps typically report 250 to $300 a year savings, and, and some have tripled their incomes. Others report time and labor savings as well, with farmers getting valuable hours back in the day. One of our customers that I've spoken to um, owns a tree nursery, and her main benefit from the solar irrigation pump is she no longer has to get up at 5.30 in the morning every single morning to make sure that those crops are irrigated. And that is just another one of the, the benefits that comes from being able to take control of that irrigation. With all these benefits, again, it sounds like something that should, should spread what, like wildfire should be everywhere. 
but pumps and especially solar pumps hold hold a, a very small share of the market still next slide please um so we've looked at at the challenges and opportunities here um, why is the market share still low and, and what can we do about it so firstly and probably one of the things i find most interesting is access to information and you can see from uh, this triangle here although the, the font's a bit blurry sorry about that um, that only a very small percentage around three percent of people are actively seeking out a product or a solar pump in this instance they are aware they have a problem with getting water to their land efficiently but they don't know how to solve it and amazingly 60 percent of customers don't even realize they have a problem when waiting for the rains or manual irrigation is historically what has been done then a lot of in a lot of its situations farmers don't realize that there is another option another challenge is then last mile distribution um, of those people who are problem aware for new technologies it's often then hard to find where to buy them it's easy to find a, a bucket for manual irrigation and most agro vet stores will be able to tell you where to purchase a, a petrol pump for example but solar pumps are yet to be commonplace in the market so you've got this challenge there where you've you've introduced the idea of a solar pump then how do people actually get that product and then price price of new technologies especially solar pumps is is known to be detrimental um, and although prices are always dropping the upfront cost of a solar pump still is currently unachievable for many small farmers farms are also farmers are often wary of of finance especially from banks and, and people who may um, call in the debts at any point and repayments don't go nicely hand in hand with the irregular incomes of of harvests which happen every few months or in drips and drabs um, next slide so um, at Futurepump, we, we've sort of identified these, these challenges, but we haven't, I admit, we haven't got the solution to them all yet. But we certainly see some opportunities here with, with those main things at the moment. So for us, market education and making product information, and especially new product information, so new and new technologies coming into the market, new things that aren't just commonly known by a lot of people, so you have to make information easy to access and easy to understand. So absolutely no jargon in any of, of the communications out there and really trying to engage and, and, and enable farmers to, to learn about the, the options available to them. And this is just about letting, letting people know that there is a, another option for them to have. Uh, last mile distribution, uh, we certainly need it to make it easier for smallholder farmers to access new technologies. And at, at Future Pump, we send weekly emails to around 30,000 end user farmers, and we get thousands of messages back. So we can see that the demand is there, but in reality, these customers have to be very lucky to be near to one of the distribution stores selling our solar pumps to actually be able to access one. And there is a clear opportunity here that we are yet to solve, but the demand is there. How do we supply that demand? And then price. Um, over the last few years, we've, we feel like we've tried all the financing mechanisms under the sun, and we are yet to find a scalable solution um, that, is, that works in all situations with a productive asset. Um, so we've gone for trying to push down the price instead. So this year we launched a new solar pump with a, an RRP of $330, which we believe takes away that need for financing and a lot for a lot of smallholders anyway, or certainly makes it a lot more achievable. And as an industry, that's where it should, there's still a lot of work to be done to get the price of solar irrigation down to be comparable with or or lower, that would be ideal, lower than other options. So it becomes the, the more obvious choice again. So 
I think if we we work on all these elements and I'm sure there are other challenges and opportunities out there as well then we'll be able to achieve the goal of connecting more farmers to appropriate irrigation and these farmers will then be able to become more resilient to climate change and unreliable rains and um, next slide so that's that's really all from me as I said we work with uh, distribution partners across several countries already but we're always looking to work with with new people more people and um, so this would be increasing our distribution options, getting more pumps to those who need them the most. And um, so if anyone knows of anyone who's looking at increasing their, uh, or distributing solar pumps, then uh, please do get in touch. And uh, thank you for your time today. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions that, that you may have. Thanks very much, Helen. Um, really interesting. Obviously we've, we've worked with the, uh, with the pump before. Um, I'm sorry, I have some building work going on next door. Very unfortunate timing. Um, but I think Dominic could field a couple of questions. Hi. Hi there. Sorry, just getting some questions now. Um, we do have a question from Janet. Um, Janet Chapman at the Tanzania Development Trust. Um, she asks, who, who are your distributors in Tanzania? And do they include a site survey to advise on which pump is needed? Yeah, so we we actually don't have a distributor signed up in Tanzania at the moment, and that is is a gap in our market. Um, the site survey it does depend on on the distributors. I certainly know that some some of our distributors will will go out and do that. Um, in most cases, uh, we try to provide as much information. Um, through our materials that say what is the the sort of suitable technical parameters for the pump um, and and let let the customer decide themselves but that is very much distributor dependent okay thanks um we have another question um for customers to be able to buy your pumps do you offer the measure of loans or, or do you collaborate with any microfinance institutions yeah so again um when I said we've tried um, several different financing options, um, microfinancing institutions has been one of the ones we've tried. As we're actually a manufacturer, we're not on the ground um, do it, making those connections. So a lot of these are through, um, through connections with our distributors. And in every single different situation, there are different, um, different financing mechanisms that are with the distributors. So, um, We've certainly tried a, a few microfinance institutions, but we haven't we haven't got one that we've uh, definitely working with. Okay, um, thanks for that. Um, one more, we have one question from um, Anna. What is the scale of land that this three hundred and thirty dollars pump is able to cover adequately? Yeah, so that is our we call it our one acre pump. So it's it's approximately one acre of, of land, depending on how you're irrigating, whether you're using sprinklers or drip or, or that kind of thing, but around an acre. Okay. Um, I'll ask one more question. Um, and are irrigation pumps sold alongside any other services or products to farmers that you have seen that works well? Um, I haven't particularly seen it. So we sometimes sell as part of an irrigation kit. So with sprinklers included um, and that kind of thing. But otherwise um, it's mainly just the, the pump on its own or dependent again on the, on the distributor. So um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen anything in particular that um, I would highlight. 